I need to go through to start. But um, when I, I decided that, it, it was at the time that it was not so easy to make films. Uh, I had no computer. It was just the beginning of Final Cut and Avid. Uh, so to make a film, you're supposed to have like materials, to have a camera, to uh, have a room to edit, uh, of this kind of um, technical needs that were not so easy. So uh, the only things I could do was to make film with uh, my small camera, like uh, amateur camera, and to work at night while I was working at day on the lab as editor and I have time to work at night but it, it should be like something really modest uh, and, and I start by some the, the film you will, you will see that are for me really strange to screen uh, I never skip them from my filmography because in one hand I like them but I'm really ashamed of them too uh, because it's Perhaps I think it's normal when someone starts to make film or like arts, writing, uh, contemporary art, whatever. Perhaps some people felt or feel that they need to go through their own uh, life, uh, autobiography, uh, like personal, uh, <coughs> to dig into their personal stories to make art about that. And I, and I experienced this moment that I felt that I had no legitimacy to talk about the world, but I could talk about myself. Uh, so the first work were uh, dealing with topics that were quite personal. But uh, I don't really like real uh, biography. Uh, I am too like shy to really talk about myself. So the film you will see are like fake autobiographical works. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a moment of my life, perhaps it's one of the only moments where I, I, I was, um, I succeed to, how to say, it. usually my work are quite serious, dealing with violence, politics, uh, heavy topics, but I, I, in my real life I'm, I make a lot of jokes. I'm, I'm really more happy than my films. And uh, those films are really like jokes films. So for me it's always strange because it's, there, is, there is this part of autobi autobiography within those films and it's, it's are really light. So, but we will, uh, we will start by that. So it's four films and it will uh, uh, be only like eight minutes. So I'm sorry for this first film you will see. We will talk about them later, but I'm always uh, quite uncomfortable to talk about them. Bonjour, je m'appelle Gabi et je veux profiter de cette soirée spéciale pour dire à tous ceux qui ne le savaient pas, qui m'entouraient, ben, que j'étais homo, enfin on dit gay, que j'étais gay. Euh, donc c'est mon père, certains membres de famille, certaines personnes que je connais et à qui je n'ai pas l'occasion de parler de ça. Les gens avec qui je travaille, ma boulangère, mon boulanger, mon libraire et tous les gens que je peux rencontrer dans la rue. Donc là ils le sauront, je suis homo. Euh, donc je suis avec un garçon que j'aime, je pense qu'il m'aime, on doit vivre ensemble, je suis heureux, épanoui. Avant, j'étais triste. J'habitais seul avec maman dans un grand appartement. Je lisais Guillaume Dustan, j'écoutais Dalida. J'avais plein de copains PD, j'allais boire des cafés dans le marais. J'allais de folles nuits et plein de rencontres furtives. Ma vie était un enfer, j'étais triste. Puis ma vie a changé, je me suis vaxé. J'ai enfin retrouvé ma dignité. J'avais un mari, une voiture, une maison. On partait tous les ans, 15 jours à Oléron. Au bureau, mes collègues ne me regardaient plus mal. J'allais même boire des bières avec eux. J'étais heureux.
drink earlier and you said that you're really not comfortable about showing uh, the last film, Rain. I think it's a perfect uh, like uh, concluding film for these four films because it shows uh, the variety of uh, styles from a film perspective that you, you're exploring. So I'm, uh, I, think, I, I can't imagine a better filmmaker than you to, to have like an opening uh, slot uh, as this uh, diverse as yours. Yeah, but uh, the thing is, it's always, uh, uh, I think I'm, I'm like a lot of personality, yeah, I'm really like polite in like my like everyday life, I'm really like a gentle guy, but I really like to be impolite, or I dream to be really impolite, and uh, for, for example the last film, it, it was a commission film. <laughs> yeah, it's strange, but it was uh, it, because I was working on a TV station in France, and the, I was working on a TV show that was called The Gay Night, and so the plan to make uh, to end the, the, the show with like experimental film about uh, sexuality. So I, I did it for, for at, at this time, but I like the idea like to to screen this kind of film on TV because even if it's like gay, it should be polite. Like acceptable, so something like uh, nice and funny, but like regularly funny as the gay is supposed to be. And uh, or even this film was screened like uh, LGBT film festival, and it was really like, always like silent in the in the theater. But I like that because it's it's really impolite. It's, it's stupid. It's one hundred percent stupid. So I like the effect, but I'm really like always ashamed at the same time. You said that this first uh, little introduction or first talk will be the shortest one. So do you want to add something, or should we continue with to the next slot? No, we can go. Yeah. So the can you announce the next film? Yeah. So um, I will come back to what, what I was uh, saying uh, before about the technical uh, problem I was experiencing at this time. Something changed, but even within those films, it's uh, I had a computer once with Final Cut, uh, Final Cut 2. Uh, and it was something like amazing to be able to edit at home uh, his own work. So, for example, with, uh, with that, I could do like uh, before I was sad, the first one with the animation. And uh, so now I, I had the possibility to make like a more proper film. And uh, it starts, um, the story starts because there was a presidential election in France. Uh, and at this time, uh, there was the first tour of election and I, people came to my uh, home because I, I was the only one to have like, enough space and a TV. So people just uh, arrived to see the, the result and to spend the night with, with me. And it's happened that two days later, it's my birthday. So they prepare like a surprise for me with cake, champagne, and whatever, and present. But the result were that uh, the far right um, candidate, Jean-Marie Le Pen, succeeded to, to go to the second term. So it was for us the first time since ages that, that something like that happened. So it was really like hurting. And we decided to go to a demonstration as soon as um, the result arrived. But my friend said, yeah, but we prepared a surprise for you. So, so in fact, we, we, we drink champagne before going to the demonstration. That was quite awkward. And so there was some kind of connection in between my private life and what is happening. So I decided to make, a, a, at the beginning, not a film about that, but make a video installation. And so I did uh, this video installation that was in uh, one screen. It was a quote, uh, like text, quote from a newspaper and for the program uh, of the Jean-Marie Le Pen program. And a lot of, um, yeah, I just pick up some, some, some sentences in the newspaper. And on the other screen, I decided to make some kind of diary. That's the links with those one. <clears throat> so I, I simply decided to scan almost all the pictures I could have in my uh, own apartment. Some kind of visual diary. And I make some sequences of like uh, picture, photograph, um, family photographs um, discover um, different
different kind of images I could have. <coughs> and I decided uh, after the exhibition to, because it, it was in a way quite frustrating to make just uh, this installation because you, you work like for one year on a project and it lasts for one week. So I decided to make a film with the screen with um, my diary, visual diary, and it's turned out to be uh, this film. Uh, so perfect. So it's, it's in a way it's my first real film, even if it's still like, um, yeah, one of my first works, so it's not really perfect. The film is called the 21st of April 2002. Uh, it's 10 minutes long, and we'll just show this one film in this slot. Images were used in this film? More than 10,000. Yeah, it was really one of my, the most boring years of my life. How much time did it take you to edit it? The editing was quite uh, fast, but just to scan everything. I spent almost one year, like spending all my night to scan stuff, and it's impossible to do something because you, you need like every minute to change the images, so you can do nothing except listen music. But you can read, you can do, it's impossible. You, so it was really boring. The editing itself, that's the problem of the film. It was not so complicated because I, I simply uh, put the image in there uh, by sequence, by their, um, uh, by, by name. I name the, 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 the scan. And so it's like uh, just by letters. And the thing that really questioned me when I finished it, it's, it's in a way really like mathematical. All the images have the same length. Uh, they are sort of almost by chance, but sometimes it works, and sometimes it's really just blurry. Or let's say also sometimes it's almost impossible to recognize images, and sometimes so, some images seem to be like stronger than the other because we can really like see them. We know that we saw these images. And it's really questioned me and I'll not help me to understand how it's work, but it's something that I will develop in my uh, next films. How long is each uh, frame? I don't remember, like uh, 12 uh, pictures a second. 12 frames? Yeah. Uh, okay, it, it might sound uh, incredible to people who aren't uh, editors, but you, uh, I suppose, uh, know the origin of every picture that you scanned. You had to select it, and you have a reason for each of the 10,000 10, pictures why you selected it. Ah, no, I, I, on this one I did no selection. <laughs> I just scanned everything. What do you mean, everything? I, I just go to my, to my, uh, I have a, uh, my, not a office, but I have a room where I was working and I just pick up everything from the wall, every books, everything, and just scan everything. Everything? Everything, except like, it's, at the end, I, I, it was quite bored to scan all the uh, uh, newspaper, but I scan all my discover, all my uh, private pictures, all my uh, art books. It was really boring, yeah, really boring. <laughs> yes. But there was no, yeah, there was, the idea was to just try to make this diary with all my pictures. Mm. So I just tried to, to, to do it. Would, would you say that this is uh, your first uh, archive film in a way? Yeah. Yeah, but it's strange because uh, there was some kind of loops. Because uh, when I, I didn't go to film school, 
I was in the university, but I, I was intern in uh, Beaubourg in Paris, uh, the art center, <coughs> for like almost two years, one, one year and a half. And uh, the, most of my time there, the long period of time, was um, they asked me to edit uh, 100 f film for an exhibition. Uh, made with uh, not only archives but with previous films. So the, co the <coughs> a curator bring back films and, and told me with this one you will make a three minute films on this topic. Not an excerpt, but you, I, I needed to re edit the film to make them like to just pick up a detail. Or it, it, it was really, it was a, an exhibition about uh, engineers and how to build building, not about architecture, but really the engineering of uh, construction. So the films were really like uh, scientific films. And they really asked me to, to, to focus on some topics, but without sound and without subtitle. Because the TV were on some table, it was impossible to have sound. So uh, I spent one year by, uh, my work was to re-edit archives. And I don't know why on this film, uh, it's the first time I work for my own films with archives, but something came back from this experience. Uh, and perhaps the reason that I, um, that perhaps there is the reason why there is no voiceover in my film with archives. Well, I never used language for for a long time. In one hand, it's because I felt uncomfortable with the language, but uh, the second uh, reason is because I knew by this experience that it's possible to make films with archives without languages. And uh, so I just, I think I jumped back to, I, I started this project because I, well, I was in a way confident in the tool of using pictures, archives. It was really like blurry for me when I started to make the film, but uh, I was not afraid by the techniques. I suppose the reason why most of you are here is because you uh, googled uh, Jean Gabriel's name and realized that he's a famous uh, archive filmmaker, uh, first of all. Uh, so this film will uh, serve us as sort of a transition from a slot dedicated to a private life uh, and now we'll uh, shift to a slot dedicated to uh, the real, let's say, real archive films. Uh, which are uh, very political and not so, so personal. So uh, next two films that we'll uh, see are Even If She Had Been a Criminal and The Devil, uh, which uh, the slot is 17 minutes long. You want to announce it or we'll just watch? No, probably we can watch it man. You don't know what we have. If you look upon my face, you are watching now the devil. If you look upon my face, you are watching now the devil. Can you tell us about uh, 
the the moment in your life when you realize that you want to start uh, studying archives and spending a lot of time in in, in uh, discovering uh, other people's footage the, 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 there was not like a, a, a moment that I, I realized myself that I want to work with archives it, it just I just go into it really like naturally it was really simple <coughs> I, I, I think you have to, there is two ways to answer why archives, but I think the first way it's something really like practical. When I start to make my own film, so I was editor on one hand and I start to make my film on the other hand. And the problem I have to face at this time is how to present myself to the people. Because I, I met some people, I need to pay my bill and I needed to make my own work, but first I needed to pay my bill. So it's impossible to present yourself as a filmmaker if you are looking for a job as editor. So it was, and I was really like unsure. I was not confident uh, anyway. So I needed to find a way to make my films like alone, uh, without needing money. Just, just trying to, I, I just I, I really needed to try things. I, wa I, I, want, I wanted to, I didn't want at this time to, to, yeah, to, to, to go to like production and, and make real film. Uh, and uh, so archives, it's, it's a way to work alone without money and to try things, just to try and to, yet to work. It, it's, it's, it was the tool I found to work. And as a, so in second hand, it's because I perhaps, I don't know how it's, how it's happened, but I, I remember from, from my family or at school, I, well, I didn't, uh, no one really learned me about history and politics. Uh, in school, we have history for sure, but it's, it's, it's really like, yeah, the, the great history, the, the history of date and great men, but not the real history. And uh, I was really lacking knowledge about politics uh, because my family don't simply care about politics. And so I felt that for me to use archives was a way to learn and to force myself to learn because it's impossible to use uh, this kind of uh, material without uh, reading books, looking for information to understand the situation, because it's really too heavy. We need to understand. So in a way, to, to use archive, it's a way to going back to school or to use a university, you need to really like work like a student and, and to read a lot, to watch other things. So it, 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 for me, it was a good way to, to shape my own knowledge. And after that, perhaps the, the archive material is something that is fragile. And it's as soon as you respect it, you take care of those images, they give you a lot. In a way, it, it's perhaps too, too abstract to say that, but it's, 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 uh, we, we, as human, you, you are shaped by images, or relation to images is kind of magical power of images, something that is always disturbing. Uh, and it's, it's, but as soon as we project ourselves within those, particularly this kind of violent uh, footages, th there is, I don't know, a way to, anyway, they give me back a lot. That, that really triggers my next question in a, in a nice way. Uh, since we are shaped by images uh, so much, uh, the interesting fact about the first film, for example, is that I'm sure that these images that you used weren't unknown to the French public in a way. They, uh, I'm sure that everybody, or not everybody, but it wasn't like a hidden fact in, in French history that he, this happened. And then you used the images which were known in a way to make a completely new aesthetical and emotional environment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a question of all ones, one look into those images. I remember when I, uh, it, and it's uh, the, even if it had been a criminal, it's the, it's the only film I made from images I, I discovered. Usually I, I stop, I, see, I have an ID, I read something, I, I question myself and it, it will be a film, 
and the archives will arrive later on on the, the, pro, the process, but it's the, it's the only film I did because I, I saw those footages. And I remember I was working on an installation, a uh, video installation about World War II uh, footage, and I, I just watched a lot of material about the war. And, uh, and I watched uh, some film about uh, liberation in France, and so for the first time, I, I well, uh, it's really easy to find those images, but I never looked for them. And I was really like disturbed, really disturbed. Uh, and after I had to edit them, all those images of World War II, including those ones, and something happened during the... It was not like really editing, it was more like a technical uh, cleaning of the images, just to cut them and to put them in order, so it was not like creating something, but just... I needed to watch them again and again to just make this kind of compilation of uh, images. But it's too violent to watch, this kind of images. Uh, but as soon as you take off the voiceover of the film, you're, you're picking them up, you cut the introduction, conclusion, and just keep them. It's really too violent, so your eyes and need to, to, to take some, to be forward or to, to, to not focus on those uh, women. And so I start to discover what is happening around. That it's, usually it's too short to simply see all the, the complexity of the image. So I start to watch all the people around, just like happy, playing with those girls, and it's become more disgusting. So the, the idea is quite simple, it's just to edit a film with those images, but to give back to the audience the way I watch them. To take the time so I need to slow down the images, to repeat them, because they are too demanding for us. They are too, uh, yeah, it's too complicated to really like see everything. So the editing is just the way to, to make them like more readable. Do we have a question? Yeah. Uh, are the archives you are uh, searching, uh, are they digital or in, or in film? Are they online or somewhere in France? Mm. Yeah. Uh, at this time, it was not online because there was no footage online uh, or like really like small stuff. Uh, so when I started to make my film, I used in one hand some uh, material I can get for my side job. Because um, as editor, most of the film people ask me to edit it more with archives. So I al always steal the, the beta and the tapes. And the other, uh, I just uh, crack some DVDs. Um, I, I could have asked for, uh, to go back to the archives and to find the original material, and particularly on film. But then I needed money. So I needed to write a film, to have a production, and it was not at all the, the kind of process I wanted to go through. And as I was, I'm, I'm quite good in post-production, I can hide. That is not so good. And at this time, the film were, uh, uh, there was no DCP at, the, at this time, so we needed to print the film on, on a 35 millimeter for cinema, uh, even for short films, for film festival. So uh, the 35 uh, version of this film for this kind of uh, archive film, it was really great because even if the quality was not so good in video, to print them back in 35 millimeters, it sounded like really like I was uh, it, it gave the taste of the original material. And, and what about the, the footage of the Black Panther party? Did you also find it randomly or you... Invested? Yeah, it's, it's on DVD and on some, uh, some online archives. Yeah, archives are, are always open as soon as you have money. But it's, it's really like, the, the thing is because, because sometimes I, I need to go to, to find the material because they are not accessible. You really, there is no other option than going to the archive. 
can give you the, I, I did a feature film, so one hour and a half, uh, uh, that is called A German Used. Is the, the, the total budget of the film was 850,000 euros. And I think three thirds of the film was for the archives. For TV archives, not like... 850,000 euros. 850,000 uh, 850, euros. Yeah. Just for the archives. So Just in terms of Croatian production, yeah, yeah, no, no, no Croatian film ever got that money, no. ever. I mean, not and, even yeah, yeah, I, I know it's it's yeah. it's really crazy, but I think something like even if she had been a criminal, if I had to pay the archives or to go back to the original material, it's something like four or five uh, fifty thousand euro. But I think uh, the thing with internet now, it's, it's really going fast, so it's, uh, I really all regularly find a new uh, website with really amazing archives. For example, with the, the Black Panther, someone sent me, the, the film is not too, too old, it's five, six years old, there was almost nothing on the internet, and I just pick up some clips from the newsreel uh, group. But now in, in one university in the States, they put online in really high-risk quality al almost all the archives of the Black Panthers. So we are not supposed to use them. As soon as it's, it's, it's like archive.org, it's when it's for like educational or like arts projects, you can use them, but as soon as it's for production, you have to pay. But it's quite fair. But yours is an art project, no? Hmm? Yours isn't? Yeah, it's art and, uh, and for sure, if I, I did make uh, The Devil uh, now, I, I could go to, I could jump to this uh, archive, but it's, it's just, uh, there are more and more, but we still have to dig and to find them. Mm -hmm. There is not like one solution to, to go through. But perhaps it was not your question. Well, no, it's okay. Do we have more comments or uh, questions from the audience about this slot? No. We're but it's, it's, we, can, we can continue about the, 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 the problem of the archive because for, for me it's, it's really important because I use a lot with archive and it was not a joke about the German news. So German news, for the one who did not know the film, it's about the RF, uh, the Red Army fraction in Germany in the 70s. So uh, guerrilla ger 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 um, uh, group in, uh, in Germany, a terrorist group. Uh, and the problem I had to, to face with this film, but also with other, is how it could, when you want to make a film about history, you need to pay, and you need to pay a lot of money. So, as, and as soon as you want to make a critical history, you want to question history, uh, no one will give you a m money or fund to do it. Only TV could do it, or like commercial production. And uh, it's really disturbing for me, because uh, as soon as you are talking about the memory of the world, of, or that is common for our society, and you need to work on that, it's simply impossible. As soon as oh, you need to be a pirate and to just steal everything as I, I do myself sometimes, but sometimes it's impossible. Uh, and when you have to, to ask for money for public funds because some right owner just wants the money, and if you don't have the money, you can't tell the story. It's really disturbing. It's, it's really, we can understand then that history is private. It's built, it's shaped, it's, and there is almost no way to criticize it. Or As soon as you, we are in film, in book it's possible, but as filmmaker it's really complicated. Uh, I'm uh, very happy that you're mentioning it, because uh, I uh, think there is a, like a major uh, problem with the archive usage on a very general level. Uh, what I uh, mean by that is the fact that you get public money to make a film, for example, and then you have to pay that public money to a public institution which gets public money to keep
keep those archives. So, uh, in a way, the TV archive or the public or the, the, the state archive is, of course, state funded. And when you get the money for it, this type of film, it's also state funded. And then you just have to like shift the money that you got to an institution which is already uh, publicly funded. Is it the same in, in France? Yeah, yeah, it, it's actually the same, like uh, everywhere. Except the, except the state with Getty or this kind of private uh, fund, um, archives place, but usually it's, uh, yeah, uh, uh, only public. But I remember once, uh, about one film we will probably saw tomorrow, that is called 200,000 Phantom about Hiroshima. So it's a film made with a picture of uh, the dome of Hiroshima. That it's a building that was not totally destroyed during the war, during the bomb, the bombing, and it, it's like the main monument of the city. So I, I, I did a film about uh, this building, and I went to the um, foundation of the memory of Hiroshima uh, in the city, the place that has the most important archives uh, about, about the war and about Hiroshima. And uh, it was really disturbing because it was not a question of money this time. But uh, in fact, they don't have like a, a board of like historian. It's only like one person named by the state that is taking care of that. And uh, he didn't want to give me pictures, archives. And I said, why? For sure, why? You didn't want to share a picture of uh, Hiroshima. And he said, but because I don't know what you will do with the picture. They say, yeah, for sure, but if you, we need to try anyway. And the use, the, you, I offer him that we usually do with archives, that you ask archive with a name or a, 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 sorry for my English, but a mark on the, or a, like on the picture so you can edit and you, after you ask for the original material, about watermark. And uh, he said, no. He replied, no, and I said, I really don't understand. And he uh, told me that if I agree to give you this picture, I won't have uh, other argument to refuse to other project. And I said, but I don't really understand. Because it's uh, the memory of Hiroshima. He said, yeah, but I'm not confident. So the only person that could use uh, this picture, it's the Yanashka, the, the national uh, Japanese TV. And he gave the right for historical book for school. So something that is really like comfortable. They won't have like uh, criticized uh, history that we criticize the way it's built, this memory. So sometimes it's not only a question of money, but really like it's really disturbing how it's really shaped. Yeah, it, it was a broadcast on, on TV, but the thing with TV, we never have like feedbacks. Mm -hmm. We just have the number of people who watch, watch it. You never had a problem to show it? No, sometimes it was a funny discussion in uh, cinema or like in festival because it's... Um, but it's not... In, in France, it, it was... How to say that? There are only a few uh, Q&A or debate with this film with people that disagree about the story itself. It's just like some people can say, yeah, it's not really like patriotic film, but usually the people who go to a film festival or to watch short movies, they are not so much like that. Uh, but I had a lot of really interesting discussion to, with the school, for a school student, for example, with this film because uh, it's really strange how still today a lot of people, even some young uh, women, don't really understand why I did the film. It's, yeah, but they was only shaped. Yeah, they were on, only that. Yeah, but they shouldn't have to have sex with German soldiers. Yeah, okay. it's really, it's still really like, like that, even in, even in France, it's like in the school, within the city, with well-educated child, it, it's still a part of them, it, it's still um, really like, for me it's really strange, it's really disturbing that nothing really changed. Okay.
uh, we'll continue talking about this topic for sure up after the next slot and tomorrow as well because it's uh, really uh, a pleasure talking to you about it. But I suggest we pass to the next slot. Uh, the next one is called 67 and the delicate art of Blungeon. Two films, uh, each four minutes long. The slot is eight minutes long in total. Uh, no, L'un des principes de base d'une alimentation saine et respectueuse de soi est de manger des aliments de saison et du terroir. C'est-à-dire de manger uniquement ou principalement des aliments produits dans son environnement naturel selon le cycle des saisons. Les hommes et les femmes tels qu'ils existent physiquement aujourd'hui sont le résultat d'une évolution très lente, une évolution toujours dépendante de leur environnement. Leurs corps se sont adaptés à la nourriture qui leur était accessible et uniquement à celle-ci. Ainsi, l'organisme humain assimile mieux les aliments pour lesquels il est adapté. La tomate a été introduite en Europe au XVIe siècle et n'est largement consommée que depuis la fin du XVIIIe, c'est-à-dire très récemment si l'on considère l'histoire de l'homme. Le corps des Européens ne peut que partiellement assimiler ce que de tels fruits peuvent avoir de bénéfiques et encore moins que par Each of these films is uh, extremely funny and extremely uh, politically uh, serious. So, would you say, uh, on a general level, that you're a political filmmaker? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If if I have to choose one word to define what kind of filmmaker I am, and I, I will say political. Yeah. Because I. I'm, yeah, yeah, perhaps I did one or two films that have nothing to do with politics. So, uh, uh, for example, one of my next projects will be a non-political film, and I really wanted to do one, like a real film, proper film that is not political. I want to try one, j just to to know what is it, to make a regular film. It should be funny, or I, I don't know, it's, I like to, to experience things. So I, I will experience that, but just once will be okay. But uh, yeah, because I, I don't know where it came from, but perhaps um, there are probably several answers. I think because the world is too complicated, or too hurting. And I'm too like um, I'm not enough courageous to to fight in the real world, so I make films. It's a way to to pretend not to do something, but to I don't know to to work on it. Uh, and because anyway, we need this kind of political films. We need to share them, and we need. We, I don't simply want to accept everything, so I I put all my anger on the films, and my hope too. My, and uh, because it's, it's so demanding to make films, I think a lot of people know that it's so much demanding that I, uh, for myself, it's not a statement because we need the, any kind of films, uh, but for myself, I don't understand why I, I will take like one year to make a film about nothing. It's not my, I need, to, as an audience, I need some time to watch films that just like um, entertain me, like an, uh, I like political film, I like, I like some time to, to, to watch films that are not political, but for myself, I, I'm not, I feel that I can, I, I can stop to make films. I don't need to make films to survive, but to, to, to live or to, it's even demanding, so if, if I spend so much time, it should be like, yeah, talk about today and how to manage and how to fight, struggle. 
Would you say that uh, you are in a way uh, shaped by the, the, the French uh, cultural environment which is very engaged and very, very political since the, since the 60s or 70s? I think so. Last time in France we can say that there was like engagement and political involvement in art, it was in the 60s. But, uh, but but I, read, <laughs> I read your interviews uh, in w which say that of course you're influenced by Ziga Vertov, but also of course by uh, Jean-Luc Godard. Mm. So I uh, suppose that you find inspiration in the, in the classics, in the beginnings, in the revolutionary films. Yeah, yeah, we were lucky, but it, it's... It's strange as a French because at the same time we had uh, René, Godard, Marker, like, like some of the most important filmmakers of the 60s. Uh, there are a lot of them worldwide, but those three, one and, and Marker and, and Godard particularly, and Godard, if we have to quote one, it's perhaps the filmmaker of the 60s. And uh, um, it, it was really important, like everywhere. So they are French, but I think they are, were not so French in a way. They are not so much Nouvelle Vague or this kind of bourgeois thing. And, and Godard was Swiss. We have a question. <laughs> It, it just, um, uh, I, I will come back about Berthoff and, and uh, what I say because I, at the time of Berthoff, he, he could really like create something in a moment where people never watch films. It was the first time for many of the people in Russia to, when they discover cinema and he say we need to offer them a cinema that is not from theater, that is a new experience and it could help us to shape a new politics in the country, a, a new uh, view. It was some, something at this time it, it, it could uh, try to reach. Uh, and I think from now, from my, uh, it's my opinion, it's, uh, it's cinema is, is useful, but it won't change the world. And, we, and the only way to change the world is to go to, to the street and take action. It's, it's, not, it's important for us to be all together in a room and to talk and to share an experience, but it won't never ch change them enough to, 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 to change ourselves or to change the world. It's just like something that makes us perhaps sometimes more comfortable, more confident to, to, to exchange something, but it's, it's not more than that. You even said that it's like the people who fought the thing that yeah, uh, I still think so. And for me, I'm not from a petit bourgeois surrounding. My family is really like worker family. But, uh, so, but for me, as filmmaker, I think it's really, really even for myself, really petit bourgeois uh, to, to be filmmaker and to, to, to make films about politics and about struggle. And uh, I, I do, I go sometimes in demonstration, but I'm not like always in demonstration. I'm not like in real life. And the only moment I can feel that uh, I'm doing something is not with this kind of film. It's when I go to jail to work with people in prison. 
or I did a film in a, in a camp in France, or with, when I, I work with people that are different from me and we work together, there's something happened, but only during the process of the shooting and the workshop, and, and, but not within the film themselves. This, I think for me it's the only moment that I, I feel that something was more than, that was not only petit bourgeois, that was not just a game. But... Uh, what keeps you going then? What makes you make films which are like this, if you still feel it's uh, like uh, there's something wrong with it in a way? Because I have no other uh, way. I, I, I don't know. It's a, the, the, the politics is so, is so depressing. So I don't want to go to these kind of parties. Uh, I don't want to some kind of association. And uh, I, I don't know. The, I, don't, I don't find a way to, to, to just. Uh, but I think I'm, I'm not alone like that. We, we are just. We all. A lot of people just feel like we don't know what happened, we don't know how to do. So the only thing, I, I, fortunately, I, I have still, I can work on the film, but it's, I know it's not enough. Okay, tomorrow, just an announcement, short announcement, we'll continue talking. Uh, we'll see some films which are uh, also very different than the films that we've seen today. We'll see a fiction film, we'll see a regular documentary film, so we'll see different uh, aesthetics which are still very, very engaged in a way, uh, almost all of them. Uh, yeah, but uh, that's just an announcement. Let's have more questions or more comments from the audience. One here. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, I changed uh, up to the film. It changed, but I, I will give you the main lines. Um, perhaps it would be disappointing to, uh, as a filmmaker, to say that. But I, I'm I'm really jealous about uh, when I think about musician and music. I, I really like music, and uh, I think uh, I'm really jealous about what we can do with music more than films. Uh, because we can share music, whatever our culture, whatever way we are, we can just go into music. It, it's really like something generous uh, music. And it could be really meaningful even when it's abstract. That it's really, for me, something powerful. Uh, this, this kind of abstraction we, we can have uh, with music. And we can feel it. It's something about the body. It's, and, and so you see uh, 210402, my first film with archives, the main problem of this film uh, was the music. Because I edit the music on the same rhythm as the images, so it's just like really too demanding for 10 minutes for me uh, when, when I saw it, and I, I felt it was something uh, wrong. Uh, and so the, uh, as soon as I, uh, for the second film I did with picture, uh, I decided to use like a regular music, and, and for sure it's ma it, it allowed me to make really like fast editing, but that are not too much hurting, that are not too demanding uh, to watch. Uh, so the music is first used for that, to make it like linear, but it also give a lot of, uh, I think a lot of the feelings of emotion of the film are gave by the music, and sometimes some like um, not explanation, but like a documentary part or some knowledge are give, uh, given by the music. Like even if it be a criminal, it's a French anthem. It's really meaningful. For the French people, we can really hear the, 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 the music. And it's, 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 gave, it's a music of the time. It's quite, uh, in terms of documentary, it's, it, it was probably played when they were shaved. Uh, and to come back to the editing, I always start with the music. 
because uh, the editing is too precise, so I couldn't change it if I change the music. So sometimes when, when I'm not really sure about the music, uh, I can hesitate for several months before starting. Or I can I, I, I do some test, but as soon as it's not perfect, it's not working, so it's like in between. So, uh, and even like, if, if, even if she had been a criminal or other film when I remixed the music, I always start, even if I don't remix all the music or I don't edit all the music before, I just uh, re-edit or mix the first sequence, make the editing, go to the second part of the music. And when I work with a musician, usually I, 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 I pick up a music and I work on it to make like a draft and I ask for the first part of the music, and I read it, and the music um, is one step after the other, until it's uh, good for me, but the music was, um, it's usually like shaped in the same time as the editing, but it's only for one or two films. Usually I prefer to work with pre-existing uh, music because it's, I'm, I'm sure about what I'm using. More questions, please. No more questions. Uh, I have a question related to the, just to wrap it up, a question about, uh, we were talking about archives and videos, but in the music you're r really using v very popular songs and, and sounds, I suppose, as well, something that you don't own in a way. Do you then uh, ask somebody uh, for rights or you just use it I always use uh, ask rights uh, because for the music is I'm I'm using I'm using archives that are uh, almost all of them 99 percent of them uh, are uh, archives without author there is no author right problem uh, so for me it's fair to just use them there is not like someone that give create something. Uh, but for the music it's different because it's really like a strong part of the film and we can recognize the people and the band. Uh, so I, I prefer to ask uh, to the composer, musician, whatever, uh, if they agree uh, with the film because it's, uh, it's really, uh, yeah, really important in the film. So usually I, up to the film I ask before when I'm sure, or sometimes I ask later, with the risk that, that the people will say no. Fortunately, they only say yes, but the few problems I, I have with, with the right was always with the music, particularly even if she had been a criminal, because the song is sung by Mireille Mathieu. Uh, I remember I was downloading La Marseillaise because it's a national anthem, are, uh, uh, there is no right on national anthem. And it, I, I just looked for a record by the army, French army, so there was no uh, right. And I was looking for a solo, a female solo, and I picked up this one, but there was no like information about it, and I didn't recognize the voice. But she's really famous, so when I did the film, People around me, or even the producer of the film, didn't say, but, oh, but it's Miriam Mathieu, because they, every one thought that I take it on purpose. But I, I just simply didn't recognize her. And when she saw the film, she was not really like happy with the film. So now we have two versions of the film, one for commercial, like for TV, and one for non-commercial. On Vimeo, you have the non-commercial one. Yeah, but it's not commercial. <laughs> okay. So okay. Yeah. Uh, final chance for uh, a question today. Yeah. Uh, this is like a very specific question. Mm -hmm. So what editing software do you use <laughs> <laughs> now that Final Cut is on the verge of He's, he's an editing student, so he I'm still work. working on Final Cut 7. seven. <laughs> yeah, but techniques, it's, it's, re it's really interesting techniques because I, I'm really a technician mm -hmm. and I do a lot of work and sometimes really complicated in terms of editing and even if it's, it's not uh, appearing in this kind of film, but there is a lot of like 
I, I do a lot of uh, post-production within uh, Final Cut 7, and every time I go to the lab and they say, what, are you, uh, what is your computer or, uh, or application? And I say, Final Cut, hey, yeah, but we don't use Final Cut set. And I say, yeah, but I make films, I make future films that are, are screened in cinema, and it's okay, don't worry, I will give you the XML. <laughs> No, but it's not, it's the, the thing with the, the, the application and tools for me, I, I'm, I'm really, in one hand, really technician, because we need techniques to make things, but in the other hand, I really don't care. As soon as I can make what I want, it's all the discussion about cameras, uh, about post-production, or what kind of size, or whatever, it's not really interesting. It, for me, it's a waste of time. Even if I spend a lot of time on techniques, so it's like a there is a contradiction with me, but it's um, actually, I don't, I, I start, to, I, I, I had lucky enough to, to learn editing, not on print, but on tape. I'm, I'm, I really think I'm really lucky because it's, now it's going too fast. People learn an application in school, two years later it's update, and you have every uh, three years to, uh, as soon as, every time I do a film, I have to call, a, and I do like three films a year, to call a lab, because it's never the same process, technical process, and I don't know why we are wasting so much time and money on, on those questions, because it's worked for one, one, 100 years, and we are still struggling with techniques, it's like, okay, make it simple. Okay, we'll then conclude with the commercial for Final Cut 7. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm announcing that we're going for drinks now, so feel free to, to use us and to ask Jean-Gabriel everything that you want. Uh, tomorrow we'll continue talking about the, more or less the same topics, but with new films. Yeah, see you tomorrow. See you.